Hey, welcome back to the channel. So I wanted to wanted to give you a bit of an update on my toothpick project. Um, so obviously I started off with analog setup on a toothpick. Uh, this is the my guitar pick frame. Uh, this seems to be the best analog setup I've come across so far. It's running these 1206 motors, four and a half thousand kV. That allows me to run two, three, or four S, depending on what sort of flying I'm doing. Um, these are the same motors that I used to build the Vista Pick. Now, uh, the Vista Pick had some varied results. Obviously, you can see from the footage, it flies really, really well in small spaces, small tracks especially. Um, I found it easier to fly and faster to fly than my five inch success setups on an indoor track. Um, just because it's so much smaller, you can fit through the gates a lot easier and it was really nimble. It just flew really, really well. But um, as soon as the weather started getting a bit better and we were able to take, take go flying outside, um, I found that the uh, the Vista pick it just could not keep up with uh, five inch success. Certainly not on these twelve oh six four and a half thousand kV motors. Um, the battery would just not last very long, and full throttle just wasn't giving you the same amount of speed. Yeah, one of one of the other things that that happened mm, three times. I think I snapped three guitar pick frames running the Vista on board just because this was never really designed for carrying all that weight and then I went to 4S and I was having to put on bigger and bigger 4S batteries I think I went up to an 850 milliamp hour 4S battery and it was just way too heavy for this frame so every time you had a it could take a few hits here and there but as soon as you uh, if you plowed into the ground because the battery was sagging, um, the arms would just snap, and it's such a pain in the butt to um, change, do a frame swap. You've got to take all the motors off, all the tape, all the take everything off, and put it all on a new frame. Just started getting really annoying, so I knew that I had to move away from the mono plate design. So uh, over lockdown, I started working on with a new toothpick style frame that uses dual arms so these are one piece arms <clears throat> um, and it's attached using two bolts two little m2 countersunk bolts into these really cool little m2 press nuts that i managed to find this really does open up the possibilities for a little bit more for these little tiny frames because um it just saves like if these were m3 it would be like three grams heavier um maybe a little bit stronger but you really don't need it when you're trying to make it um strong and light the the, the original gut guitar pick frame is um two and a half mil thick this one these are two and a half mil thick um which is pretty good but i wanted to go thicker so I've gone for three mil thick arms with a traditional sandwich plate style where you've got top, uh, top, well it's a mid plate really, there's no top plate so you've got a mid plate and bottom plate holding it all together uh, this is just a prototype so it's subject to change really look quite a simple design but hopefully very effective um, I've also done it as a 4 inch version um, this is the one I actually built up first obviously uh, uh, this is running 1507 3000 kV motors on 4 inch 4 uh, 4 by 4.3 props. Um, I was really hoping that 3000 kV, even though these are these are what I was using on a 3 inch 6s prototype, I was really hoping that 3000 kV would be enough for uh, 4 inch on 4s, but uh, yeah, again, it just doesn't have the top end. It's got loads of nice control, low end, and yeah, it's quite fast, but compared to my 5 inch, it's it's not fast enough. And yeah, my my what I want to do is try and build something that's a lot a lot smaller than a 5 inch, 
a lot cheaper than a 5 inch and more importantly runs small 4S batteries that are like half the price of the 6S ones we have to buy for um, for, for our 5 inch racers. You know, it's, I haven't got a problem with spending money if you have to but if you can build something that's just as fast and easier to fly uh, that costs less to run then why wouldn't you? Um, I don't, I really really think that I'm I'm quite close to finding a really perfect setup. On my Vistapic, I was running this uh, Gep RC all-in-one whoop board. It's a pretty nice board and it performed really well, but like most of the whoop boards, it only has one full UART broken out. <clears throat> so the issue with that is I have to use one UART for um, Crossfire and I need a second UART to run MSP with the Vista and these are designed for analog so they only have a transmit on the other uh, UART for running smart audio which does make sense to not have the extra pad there but um, obviously they didn't really consider DJI at the time. Um, Beta FPV have come out with one, uh, their V3 um, board but it's like 50, 50 quid which I think is just too much for one of these little boards, really. I'm not paying 50 quid for... <laughs> Look at it. Yeah, it's not worth 50 quid. It doesn't have anywhere near the components on it that would warrant that sort of price. It's only BL Heli S. Yeah, uh, so this is a board I found on Banggood that they kindly sent me for testing. Um, I can't even remember the name of it because it's just a load of gobbledygook. JHC blah blah blah. It's an F411 all-in-one board from some no-name brand in China. Probably Banggood themselves. Um, but what this has is two full UARTs broken out. So it's ideal for running um, the Cadix Vista. So I'll be able to run MSP on Crossfire at the same time. No problem at all. Another little thing I like about this board is that it has the option for plugs or direct solder um, of your motors. I personally just direct solder, but some come with the plugs and it's actually really nice, especially if you're a beginner, um, to use the plugs because if you break a motor or whatever, if you, it just makes swapping motors a bit easier. Less soldering involved, even though you've got to solder the things on in the first place. So I don't know. I, I'd rather have some slightly bigger pads. All the pads on it, apart from the LiPo pads, are very small, so you've got to be pretty um, pretty good at soldering to, to do a clean job. But that's why I was running on this little 4-inch and um, had absolutely no problem. Full throttle for plenty, full throttled it loads, really like pushed, pushed this as, as fast as I could make it go. But as I said, I think the KV is a little bit low for for 4S, so it didn't really sweat it. Um, but now I've got a Vista coming tomorrow and I've been working on the Vista V2 mount, uh, the Vista Pick V2 mount. So it's got a much wider, a much bigger opening for the camera lens now. Uh, and it's actually got holes, like dual holes there. That's so that you can run like this one is set at um, 25 degrees and then you can run the camera lens right at the top there to get 45 degrees just by using the other holes here so it's now got adjustable camera angle either 25 or 45 degrees depending on whether you're freestyling or racing with it slightly different cutouts um, managed to reduce the height of this camera pod slightly so there's a little bit extra space there, but it's largely uh, the same design as the last one. Um, you'll notice that these two are slightly different. That's because I've created this version for when you're running the um, run cam replacement lens. Uh, it sticks out more than the DJI one, so it just needed a bigger lip. So it's got that one's got a bigger lip on it. These will be both on uh, Thingiverse. Uh, probably before this video goes out actually. So uh, the other thing that I didn't actually stupidly didn't include in the last download uh, for the Vista Pick Canopy was the base that I designed for it. This one's slightly different than the one I'll put online because it's got these 
for uh, these cutouts for the press nuts. But what this actually did was raise your flight controller slightly uh, to the exact perfect height for those 16, for those um, M1.6 20 mil bolts to go through the frame, through this, through the flight controller, through the Vista mount and just bolt into the Vista, the perfect height. Um, so yeah, sorry about that, but it didn't really make crazy amount of difference. Uh, but it does make it work a lot better. So yeah, that's about it. Whoop board, definitely recommend this one. It's based. Um, there'll be links in the description below. Uh, Banggood said they'll give me some discount code as well because this uh, summer prime sale is on. So yep, yeah, check the links in the description for discount on this. I think at the moment it's only 30 quid. So it's a hell of a lot cheaper than that beta FPV one. Uh, you don't get an XT30 with it, you get an XT60 with it, which is weird. Um, so you will need to buy an XT30. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hey,